Hi, I'm Rick Dior. Today we're going to compare two snare drums that I use for playing jazz. So this drum right here is a Gretsch Centennial wood drum with the normal Gretsch Jasper shell. And this drum was made in the early 1980s, 82 or 83. This drum here is a Premier Royal Ace snare drum. And this drum was made in the 1960s. I think the early 1960s. It is chrome over brass, extremely heavy. So I'll talk a little about these drums and then we'll take them over to the drum set and play them. Now I've put calf heads on both these drums since that's what I normally use when I play jazz, at least on my snare drum. And they're tuned to roughly the same pitch, which is a G. Now, of course, the timbre is going to be a little different because of the metal versus wood uh, construction. So one thing you're going to notice right off is that the metal drum is going to be a little liver, and I'm, you know, well, you'll hear that, uh, and you hear that right now. I'll show you once more. So yes, uh, the shell construction makes uh, a huge difference in the sound of a drum. One thing you also need to remember is that calf heads are drier than plastic heads in sound. So if you've not played calf heads before, that's one thing you need to know before you go out and spend you know, $400 on a set of calf heads is that it's a very dry sound. It's an old sound. So if you, look, you go online and you search Gene Krupa playing Sing Sing Sing, uh, there's a good video on there. Uh, he does a big thing on just toms, not a lot of cymbals you'll hear what calf heads sound like. So I recommend you do that. So let's just talk real quickly about these drums. Like I said, this Gretsch drum, uh, Centennial drum, just uses the traditional snare setup, Jasper shell. And these snare drums, especially the wood drums, I think sound great, especially in the six and a half by 14 inch size, which is a little bit rare in a Gretsch wood drum. Most of those, were five, five and a half inch drums. And of course, their metal drums are very, very famous. This drum, the Royal Ace, if you're not familiar with it, uses a parallel snare system that pretty much floats over the whole bottom of the head and extends about half an inch past it. So these drums are known for having their throw off or strainer system kind of go bad over the years, what happens is these snares that hook into this throw off will stretch and then that's what creates your tension and the snare then will not stay on. This one does. It's in great shape. I have several of these drums, different sizes, and I already did a video on my 4 by 14 inch snare drum, Royal Ace, same vintage as this and chrome over brass that I'll, I'll put a link to that in the description. And I showed you that if you're having some problems with the strainer, a few ways to fix that. Uh, also, one thing I didn't mention in that video that I've done recently is I've taken a uh, long set of 15 inch snares and actually bent up the edges so they can hook into this strainer and I actually made a set of snares. And I'll try to uh, show you a video on that at some point. But uh, I've read about it uh, online. Uh, someone did that, I thought it was a brilliant idea. And I tried it with a pair of needle nose pliers and it worked. Uh, the other thing you could do is really just solder new snares on there, cut them, and then, and I've done that. So I cut them shorter, solder them, and then they're tight again. But that, that's what kind of holds this thing together, the tension. It's just kind of like a timpani head when you lose tension on your, your timpani heads, the pedal no longer will work real, uh, really well since it's a balanced action system. And the head is what holds that tension for the pedal. Okay, so one benefit of these, like I talked about in that other Royal Ace video, is that you get very little snare buzz. So if you don't like snare buzz, 
this is the drum for you. Compared to this drum, as you'll see, you get some, of course, but that sympathetic vibration, a lot of it is um, taken care of by this snare system that is perfectly parallel across the whole head, where this system, as in all conventional snare systems, is not. So you might have a snare bed that sits in that snare bed, of course, and that will cause more snare vibration. Now the other thing that you can do to fix it, and I've mentioned this in a few videos, you can either loosen or tighten this lug and this lug, and that lug and that lug, and see if that helps. That's an old studio trick. All right, so try not to get off topic too much here. I will not be using any external muffling. These drums both have internal mufflers. This one has a really pretty cool one, if you can see it. And of course, this is the conventional Gretsch square or rectangular muffler. I don't use internal muffling, so I won't be using any muffling. That's one of the benefits of using cafe as well. The other benefit is brushes. When you play brushes on these drums, on calf heads, they never wear out. So they always sound the same and they always sound good. So we'll go over to the drum set so you can hear both these drums and um, uh, we'll see what the major differences are. All right, so we're here at the drum set and again, you've seen this Gretsch Centennial snare drum before. It's the same drum I use with the rest of the Centennial kit. So we'll play a few different styles and we'll play some with brushes as well.
All right, now we'll put the um, Premier drum up here. This head has a few rough spots. That's common with calf heads, so I just take a little sandpaper and I'll ca take care of these. Happens is the brush will get stuck. So it's not a problem if you get a head like that. Just take some 400 grit sandpaper very lightly and just sand those down really, really lightly. Okay, so my initial impressions of, of this drum, first of all, it's much more ringy, so we'll see if that comes across on the recording. Uh, and it's got a looser feel. So uh, the snares are a little bit looser, and we talked about that strainer. I can tighten them like this. It's not a problem. So uh, it works well for any kind of backbeat stuff too. This is not that kind of drum set, but the snare would work well for that. And it's got a lot of power and really ringy rim shots. One thing I didn't do is play a little bit of some uh, a little bit of Latin style.
I'm really fond of that kind of metal brass sound with a kit like this. Now, like I said before, I want to show you something with the snare buzz. And uh, I'll play these toms. Hardly anything. Hardly anything. A little more because it's tuned very similar to the drum. So if anything's going to do it, it'll be the floor tom, but it's not that bad. So great drums, both of them, and they do have some very different characteristics. And the deep drums are really, really nice for playing jazz sometimes. I know a lot of folks don't use those. You know, the, the traditional size is either a 4x14 four or a 5 or a 5.5x14, but these 6.5s are great drums. So I'll just play a little more and we'll call it a day. <laughs> 